The United Nations says that fossil fuels have run out of road. It's the end of the road in spite of the best efforts of lobbyists. Remember that fossil fuels are still receiving literally hundreds of billions. In fact, some say around a trillion dollars a year in global subsidies. In spite of all of that, the United Nations is saying it is the end of the road. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. Fossil fuels have run out of road, said the head of the United Nations last week. With the price of renewable energy now so cheap, the energy transition cannot be stopped, despite the best efforts of oil and gas and coal lobbyists and their supporters. Now, obviously, um, Donald Trump might have something to say about that, but uh, it's not much he can do. And sure, he might be able to turn the tide a little bit one way for the next few years, but um, he will, you know, probably not be around for a long time. He can't be re-elected, put it that way. Speaking ahead of the release of two UN reports on the energy transition, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said nine in 10 renewable projects globally are cheaper than fossil fuel alternatives, 90%. He said that renewable energy is now driving growth in large developed economies, including in core oil produce, producing regions such as Texas, uh, where renewable energy is growing faster than in any other state in the United States, Texas. A combination of national security, no embargoes on wind and easy access, you can't build a coal plant in someone's backyard, meant renewables were here to stay. I should mention there are some coal power plants in people's backyards in the United States, and they're the most polluted places you can live in America. I just did a video on that. The clean energy future is no longer a promise. It's a fact, he said. No government, no industry, no special interest can stop it. Solar was once four times the cost of fossil fuel equivalents. In fact, it's kind of more than that considering solar by itself uh, doesn't solve the issue. You need solar and batteries. But according to new data from the International Renewable Energy Agency, cited by Guterres, solar now costs two-fifths of the price of oil, gas, and coal. Two-fifths. 40%. Offshore wind developments are now half the price, 53% cheaper than fossil fuels. Guterres said he expected the fossil fuel will lobby will try, and their supporters in government will try to derail the transition, but the world has now passed the point of no return. It's in, a, in its adoption of renewable energy, but warned the world, or he warned, the world needs to move faster to embrace the technology. And while Oxford University seems to agree, they're saying that the world could save $30 trillion by more quickly moving to renewable energy. Climate scientist Bill Hare, CEO of Climate Analytics, says the latest data showed the future is based on renewables and that governments must send a clear signal in their upcoming climate commitments to go even faster. Any investment in new fossil fuels now is a fool's gamble, while joining the race to renewables can only bring benefits, not just jobs and cheaper energy at stable prices, but energy, independence, and access where it's needed most. Developing regions like Africa have huge energy access needs and even bigger renewable resources. What they need now is international finance to share in the renewables revolution. That said, Africa still is at around 56% renewable energy. The push to develop new gas resources in places like Western Australia and Brazil runs completely counter to this trend and risks slowing down the uptake of renewables as well as overshooting the 1.5 degrees Celsius Paris Agreement's limit. Now, to be fair, Western Australia is also investing massively, primarily in renewable energy and batteries, solar and batteries. Renewaleconomy.com.au says the UN chief was speaking days before the International Court of Justice is expected to, del to deliver its advisory opinion on the obligations of states to respond to climate change. The opinion will address two basic questions. What are the obligations of governments under international law and what are the legal consequences for states that have caused significant harm to the atmosphere and environment? That's a key issue. Currently, I believe in New York, uh, 
companies are being sued for the damage they've done to the environment. And it's putting them in a position where they're worried they're going to lose potentially hundreds of billions of dollars. Interestingly, Shell has just reported a drop in profits, a crash in profits of 30%. Last week here in Australia, Torres Strait Islanders they actually sued the government and the federal court said the government had breached a duty of care to them by failing to take climate change seriously. But the court found the government had, well, they said this, paid scant regard to climate science when setting its targets and has, had systematically adopted goals that represented the lowest possible ambition. It found there was no remedy, though, under Australian law. However, I think the government in the United States right now, politicians involved in America's rollback of renewable energies, need to be very um, careful and concerned about what they're doing. They may be sued. And this could be a huge issue for them in the future. Even as individuals, they could be sued. Last week, the United Nations Environment Program announced Australia would support a first of its kind in the world study of methane emissions from coal mines, which are said to cause massive amounts of pollution. Coal mines are responsible for 40 million tonnes of methane emissions annually. And methane, commonly referred to as gas or natural gas, is actually a potent greenhouse gas. And its emissions are 80 times more harmful than CO2 in the atmosphere over a 20-year period. RenewEconomy.com.au says that a spokesperson from the Australian Department of Climate Change, Energy, the Environment and Water said it will involve controlled releases of methane over a site designed to simulate an operational open-cut coal mine with a specific site yet to be determined. Now, coal mines have been trying to hide the methane emissions they're putting out and they have intentionally lied about the amount of methane that's coming out of their mines which is um not to be i guess not a big surprise unep's international methane emissions observatory for a study to better understand exactly what the hell is going on anyhow getting back to the united nations isn't it interesting how they're, they're looking at the data here and they're, they're not saying this i believe from an emotional perspective they're saying looking at the data Renewable energy projects are far cheaper than fossil fuel projects. The only logical reason they are concluding that there is still any fossil fuel energy projects at all is really coming down to oil and gas lobby, lobbying groups. And, you know, basically politics, politics, dirty money. That's essentially what they're saying. Otherwise, none of this would make any sense. Now, People who are against renewable energy, they'll say, well, follow the money. Look, so much is being, so many subsidies are being poured into renewable energy. But the facts of that is completely nonsensical. The reason being that the amount of money invested in the fossil fuel industry, even over the last 12 months, is literally four times higher than what's been put into, into renewable energy. Four times higher. So if subsidies were removed, which is what I guess Elon Musk is suggesting, remove subsidies for everything, remove them for EVs, remove them from solar, remove them from batteries, remove them from oil, remove them from gas, remove them from coal. If, the, if it was a completely level playing field, actually renewables would be significantly cheaper than they are today in comparison to fossil fuels. And that's sort of partly what the United Nations is pointing out. They're saying, even in spite of all these subsidies, it's game over for internal combustion and for coal, oil and gas.